early hour. I'm still asleep, but meanwhile facts are taking place. The window grows white, the darknesses turn gray, the room works its way from hazy space, pale, shaky stripes seek its support. By turns unhurried, since this is a ceremony, the planes of walls and ceiling dawn, shapes separate one from the other, left to right. The distances between objects irradiate, the first glints twitter on the tumbler, the doorknob. Whatever had been displaced yesterday had fallen to the floor, been contained in picture frames, is no longer simply happening, but is. Only the details have not yet entered the field of vision. But look out, look out, look out. All indicators point to returning colors, and even the smallest thing regains its own hue, along with a hint of shadow. This rarely astounds me, but it should. I usually wake up in the role of belated witness, with the miracle already achieved, the day defined, and dawning masterfully recast as morning. Spirit of the East, Spirit of Air, blow over us and make us clean. On your fresh breezes we taste resurrection, on your powerful gusts endless possibilities. Spirit of the South, Spirit of Fire, you burn away the past to make room for the future. We have worn ashes for the old that has died. Teach us now to use them to nourish the new. Spirit of the West, spirit of water, your rain soaks the earth and prepares it for growth. As you soften the soil, grown hard in winter, soften to our hearts that compassion might bloom. Spirit of the North, spirit of earth, the first buds of spring burst up beneath our feet. As the air fills with the sweet scent of green, plant in our souls a new seed of hope. Spirit at the center, creator of being. We shudder at the possibilities of new beginnings. Renew our thirst for justice. Free us from despair, that as the earth is reborn, so, so might, might the, the world, world be transformed. transformed. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. 
We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth. Like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. The love of God poured into our hearts, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and the abundant life of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. Because you have heard me offering salvation with grace upon grace, turning the stone that the builders rejected into the cornerstone rock of our faith. This is the day.
a reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now I will remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I turn in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You were looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Oh, good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Look, the flowers have come up. Spring has sprung. New life is all around us, just like Jesus being resurrected today. You know, I was thinking about Easter, and we're celebrating it today in Portland, but did you know that all around the world, not just here in Portland and not just here in the United States, they're celebrating Easter? And so I was thinking, and I wondered what Easter might be like in another part of the world. So we're going to go inside, and I want to share with you a story about Easter in another continent. Let's go. Hey there again. It's a little quieter inside so we can hear each other. So again, I was thinking about what Easter would be like in another part of the world, and not just another country, but a whole other continent. And so I found a story about Easter in a place called Lagos. Let's look at a map and see exactly where Lagos is. From Portland, we are traveling all the way across the Atlantic Ocean to the continent of Africa. Lagos is a city in the country of Nigeria, bordered to the south by the Gulf of Guinea and to the east by the Lagos Lagoon, 
Lagos is a thriving port city, economic hub of Nigeria, and a major financial center for all of Africa. With a metro population of over 21 million people, Lagos is second in size only to Cairo in Egypt. As a comparison, Lagos has 2 million more people than the New York City metro area in an area that is half the size. Really interesting, right? So this morning, we're going to read this story, Easter in Lagos, and see what this holiday is like in Nigeria. Easter in Lagos by Sharon Abimola Salu, illustrated by Maria Nikla. Ayatomi felt the rays of the sun warm on her face. Golden beams streamed through glass windows, lighting up the church. Inside her heart, Ayatomi felt like the sun, warm and bright. It was Easter Sunday. Everyone was excited. Sounds of celebration filled the air. Many people still had palm fronds made into small crosses from Palm Sunday. Ayatomi sat in church with her family. Rows of people sat in church pews dressed in bright colors. The elaborate red and gold head tie of a woman reminded Ayatomi of someone special. I miss Grandma, Ayatomi said to Mummy. Me too, said Mummy. She's spending Easter with your auntie and uncle in Ibadan. I wish she was spending Easter with us in Lagos, said Ayatomi. At home they ate a hearty Easter lunch. Their plates piled high with jollof rice, turkey, manwah, plantains, meat pies, scotch eggs, and lots of other goodies. After lunch, Ayatomi's older brother, Shea, said to her, Why not write seven reasons why Grandma should spend the next Easter in Lagos? You can show it to her next time she visits. Excellent, said Mummy. Terrific, said Daddy, winking at Mummy. Earlier that week, Mummy and Daddy had received a very important letter from Grandma. She told them of her plans to spend Easter in Ibadan, but she also mentioned something else. Daddy and Mummy didn't tell Ayatomi or Shea what that something else was. It was a surprise. In her room, Ayatomi wrote, Dear Grandma, I miss you very much. Easter isn't the same without you. Neither is Lagos. Did you know that Lagos is the center of excellence? I think Lagos is an excellent place to spend holidays. Grandma, you should spend your next Easter in Lagos. Here are seven reasons why. And she wrote seven reasons why her grandmother should spend Easter in Lagos. The seventh one was church service. Today was Easter Sunday, she wrote. We all went to church dressed in our special Easter outfits. People wished each other Happy Easter. The pastor preached about the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we sang hymns. Then we came home and feasted. Grandma, I saved a seat for you. I want to sit beside you next Easter. I hope I'll see you before then. Your Ayatomi. The next day was Easter Monday. As the family prepared to attend a barbecue party, the doorbell rang. Shea answered the door. The visitors stepped into the sitting room. Surprise, said Mummy and Daddy. Ayatomi and Shea screamed for joy. Grandma, I'm so happy to see you, said Ayatomi, hugging her tight. I'm happy to see you too, all of you, said Grandma. So Grandma went with them to the barbecue party where they had lots of fun and ate lots of food. When they got back home, Ayatomi showed Grandma the letter she had written. But you left out the most important part, said Grandma. What's that? You, Ayatomi, you're the number one reason why I would spend any Easter in Lagos, said Grandma. I love you, Grandma. I love you too, Ayatomi. Will you pray with me? Good and gracious God, Holy One, Holy Three, send your Spirit in this time and place 
allow our hearts to meet your word and together proclaim the good news of new life. Amen. When her husband died, there was one thing that Kate Braystrup knew she had to do. As soon as I was told that he was dead, she recalls, I knew I wanted to go and see him and take care of him. It took a bit of back and forth, but she was able to go and do what her gut told her she needed to do, to be with her husband, to be in his presence. For about 20 minutes, she stayed with him. And after, Kate, her mother, and some officers who had come with, dressed him in his Class A uniform for his final burial. It was kind of great, she said, beautiful, and sad and funny. In this act, she learned something important. She says, you can trust a human being with grief and walk fearlessly into the house of mourning because grief is just love squaring up to its oldest enemy. And after all these mortal human years, Love is up to the challenge. It is the challenge of taking care. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. When I read Mark's account of this early morning on the first Easter, I can't help but think about how the two Marys and Salome have one thing they want to do. They want to see Jesus, and they want to take care of him. And not the uncertainty of the journey, nor the possibility of arrest, or even worse, by the Roman officers, or even ironing out all the details will keep these women who took care of him in his life from being with Jesus in his death. And they do what they must, walk fearlessly into the house of mourning because grief is just squaring up to its oldest enemy. And after all these mortal human years, Love is up to the challenge. Yet once they arrive, they realize the startling truth. He isn't there. And even the good news that is shared by this mysterious man in the white garment can't write what has been upended. And so they flee in terror and amazement. Or as one translator puts it, they went bolting out of the tomb, convulsed and out of their minds with shock. This is how it ends in Mark's accounting, nothing more. Now, no one really knows what happened after the three women fled from the tomb. If we rely on Mark and where he ends the story, we don't know if they eventually go and do as the mysterious young man asks them to do, to tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus will meet them all in Galilee. Yet one thing I'd be willing to bet on is that while the women are running away, having been robbed of the opportunity to take care of Jesus, they are now taking care of each other watching out, picking each other up as they stumble, holding on to each other, crying together. Regardless of what this particular gospel tells us about what happened, don't we know in our bones that to bring life where it seems to be dying or absent altogether is the work 
of community, of being in relationship with one another, leaning on one another, celebrating our joys and consoling one another in our sorrows. When any of us experience something akin to the women coming to the tomb to find Jesus missing, when any one of us feels like God has disappeared and we flee in terror and amazement, what we do as a people of God is come together. Real life is like this mysterious and disturbing ending of Mark. We don't know what's going to happen. We prepare for one thing, and when we get there, everything is upside down. The happy ending isn't obvious, and if we're told it's coming, sometimes the anxiety and fear of not knowing keep us from receiving or remembering this good information. Yet what we have learned is that there is someone there right by our side, scared with us, running with us. And that very fact of being not alone can help us remember the greater truth that God, too, is right there by our side. The world wants us to believe that we are alone, that we have to do it ourselves and be afraid and anxious and worried as a solitary act. It's a kind of death. Yet what we know from the witness of these women is that we are never alone. We have one another to give us life. And we have God. Togetherness is resurrection. Whenever we are confused and out of our minds with shock, it's together that we find a way toward that which God has promised. There we might find the hope in love we share with one another, the care we take of one another. It's the love between us. And after all these mortal human years, love is up to the challenge. With each step we take together, we might become a little less afraid, a little less terrified, a little more hopeful, a little more trusting. Together we might find the faith to believe that God will do what God will do. We'll wipe away the tears from all faces and we'll swallow up death forever. To the glory of God.
We believe that God is present in the darkness before dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty, where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms, and the sun rises over barbed wire. We believe in a with us God, who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. We affirm a faith that takes us beyond the safe place, into action, into vulnerability, and into the streets. We commit ourselves to work for change and put ourselves on the line to bear responsibility, take risks, live powerfully and face humiliation, to stand with those on the edge, to choose life and be used by the spirit for God's new community of hope. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. We begin our time in prayer with silence to name aloud or in our hearts those for whom we pray this morning. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. See us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Sense us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying and those who grieve. Assure them of your promises. Receive us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Restore us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Know us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, the risen Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace.
Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. Freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway from home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call upon you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God, who is the mother of all, births us into new life. O oh God, plant in our hearts a seed of hope. God, who is the Father of all, opens the doors of possibility. O oh God, plant in our hearts a seed of vision. God, who is the creator of all, moves us to action. O oh God, plant in our hearts a seed of justice. O oh Holy One, today your earth is resurrected. Fill us with the joy of renewal that we may know how death leads into life. We come before you as your people of transformation. Alleluia. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Jesus. The God of life, the Holy Trinity, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news, Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia. Thank you.